Hello, my name is Andreas and I'm all about designing and building a boat. In the last episode, I talked about which kind of boat I want to build and why, and I talked a little bit about the dimensions. Today, in this episode, I want to start drawing. So I will be talking about the tools and I will explain the lines which I'm drawing. Okay, I'll jump right in. That's better. So I'm using a simple sheet of paper, 65 by 46 centimeters, 25 by 18 inches. And it's an uncoated sheet of paper and it's lightweighted. If you are living in an area where the humidity is changing a lot, you should probably use cardboard so it wouldn't shrink or expand that much. Now I will be taping this to a drawing board, but basically any table is fine as long as the edges of that table are square. Because then I can use a T-ruler to draw all the horizontal and vertical lines on this plan. To draw all the lines one should always use a hard pencil because a hard pencil leaves a thin and very precise line. Uh, the disadvantage of that is that uh, it hardly shows on camera. So this is why I'm using a simple soft pencil instead. It leaves of course a very broad line but that way you can see what I'm doing here. On the drawing board. So often enough when you draw with pencil you have to erase something so an eraser of course is mandatory and sometimes if lines are crossing and you don't want to erase the cross itself then you need something to protect it and I found this uh, blister package here and uh, this has a very sharp edge and I can just press it hold it down and erase as far as I want to go. All the grid lines that we have on the plan, which are not subject to change, uh, even if I have to uh, erase some of my pencil drawings, the grid is always the same, so I can do this with pen. Uh, professionals would use an ink pen, but I don't have an ink pen, so I will just be using a simple pen. All the straight lines are taken care of. Now what about the curved ones? We have the stem line, we have the main station, we have the transom, and although hardly noticeable, we also have the shear line. Now for this, I use some really nice piece of high tech, high cost, a water bottle, to which I taped with some duct tape a nail. Uh, very good. So make sure that the tip of the nail is flush with the bottom of the bottle. And that way you have a gap between the nail and the bottle. And now if you use three of them, you can lock a button between them, which is basically just a wood strip. So you place the wood strip at the center of the line you want to draw and you place the other bottles and now you can by just moving the bottles around you can shape out a curve and draw it and of course small radii like this one can't be drawn with this wood strip basically for every application there's another wood strip another button and for example here i have one which is broad but also very thin and that one goes really nice around the corners So that's all I need to draw, so let's start. The first line that I draw is the baseline and I do this in pen because it's a permanent line. Imagine you are sailing in shallow waters, then the keel would just touch the sand underneath it and the baseline, that would be the sand. All right, now I have to find the middle of this line here. From this line, I can find the position of the edges of the boat lengthwise. Now my boat should be 16 foot in length, so 8 foot to the front and 8 foot to the back. And this translates here into 24.4 centimeters. 
Now, one thing I forgot to mention in the first part of the video is why am I using such a big piece of paper? And the answer is on a big piece of paper, I can draw in a larger scale. And that means less error when I finally transfer my measurements to the big scale in which to build the boat. So, for example, if you model on a smaller piece of paper, and let's say you have a scale of 1 to 30, then an error of a 32nd of an inch becomes almost an inch. Whereas if you have a bigger scale, like 1 to 10, then of course it's just 10 30 seconds of an inch in error in full scale. So you are much better off if you can draw on a larger piece of paper. I have marked the end position of the boat and the front position. So I will draw with pencil this time, a vertical and just a thin line for now. I will also draw the line that runs vertical to the middle of the baseline, which is called the center line. And the center line will become very important because that will be the line from which we measure all the widths or the breaths as we call it in nautical terms. So these are the three lines. Now, next thing that I need, because I haven't really made up my mind about the height at the back and at the front of the boat, but I'm pretty certain about the height in the midships. I need to mark this height first. So I decided to have a boat of a height of six feet amidships. And that's about 18 centimeters. And now I mark the position of this, not only in the middle, but also at the bow as well at the stern. Now these are just temporary markings. I just want to compare the height midships with the height at the bow and at the stern. And actually, this is what I'm going to do next. I will actually draw the so-called shear line. So I need something flexible now, like this wood strip and my water bottles. Now I place the first bottle where I marked the height midships. And now I take the other two bottles. And now I can, as I have shown you already, flex the wood strip, the batten, and find the line that I want to draw. Now, one thing that I found is really important because wood is always bending in a parabolic shape. So it is rather important that you always bend the wood strip symmetrically. And I think I am set. So I will now draw this line. So this is the front portion of the shear line and what you've seen here is that the shear line comes from a gentle curve and will end up running horizontally when it hits midships. And that is exactly what I want and I want the same to do with the shear line going aft. It comes curved, gently curved, and it runs horizontal into the midship section. And that way, both curves will meet just perfectly. So I want the shear line towards the stern not being as high as towards the bow, but it's just my taste, so there you go. By the way, if you want to draw a shear line which is just a flat line, it's actually not that nice because the bow is further away from the eye than the midship section. So basically what will happen is if you see the boat from the side, uh, the shear line will actually sag a little bit. So it's always nicer just for uh, to please the eye to have a curved shear line. There is my shear line. Very well. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I will be drawing both the stern post and 
the stem and I start with the stern post because that's quite easy because it's a straight line in my plans. So I'm just using a different ruler this time. Now, if I were the boat builder and I would have a plan and I want to mark how large my keel is, how would I learn this from the plan? The designer should leave me a measurement from the top position to the actually point where the stern post hits the keel. So I make this now just for fancy, I make this a foot, which translates into three centimeters in my plan. And now I can draw a straight line between these markings. So, and that would be one foot. Now we can lift an angle between the stern post and the baseline. Now the front is a little bit more troublesome because I want a curved bow. So let's see how we manage this. I will check first whether this wood strip, this pattern here is flexible enough. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe with a little help. I'm placing one bottle to catch that wood strip. You see, this is not exact science. I'm rather trying to find a pleasing curve. And there it is. What I can do next is I can establish the water line. And in my fantasy, this boat will actually be submerged uh, three foot four inches in a metric system that would be a meter. And I mark it length on the water line. This is the water line here. Very good. And the length of the water line actually is uh, between these two points here. Very good. Now, the height of the water line, of course, is uh, at this point, nothing else but wishful thinking because I'm designing a new boat and I have no idea yet whatsoever how deep the hull will be submerged. Basically, I will learn this eventually and I will try actually to find a, a clever method that uh, will save me some time because the right way to do this is to design the whole hull on paper and then uh, to apply a rule that is called uh, scantlings and uh, these basically tell you depending on what material you are building this boat from all the dimensions of every member of the boat and then you would have to calculate for every member the weight and then you get the sum of that. And that's a very tiresome work and I will try to find a way around that. So as for now, this is my design waterline and it might be changing. Maybe I will find out that the boat uh, can't be submerged that far and uh, stays further up and there will be methods to deal with that. For example, I could just uh, cut a section of above the water line and uh, reduce it a little bit. I can add a little bit more uh, lead weight later. All possibilities. Oh, and another thing that just came into my mind. I'm drawing a long keel and a long keel means that uh, on this first draft, everything is drawn. So the long keel is drawn completely. If you are building a boat with a fin keel, like the Balboa 16 that I have shown you the last time, you would omit the keel in these drawings. This is something that you add later. The next thing that I'm going to draw are some horizontal lines. So this is the plan now almost completed. At least we have a complete profile view and I can measure now the heights like so. And I can measure from the center line and have an exact idea of how the stem line uh, will look. What's left to do is to draw the main station and the transom view 
from the front or from the aft. The first thing to do is to find what is called the half breadth of the boat. The half breadth is so to speak the half width of the boat or the half beam as it is also called. I want my boat to be eight foot in width. The half width or half breadth would be four foot. It's actually only for one point of the curve relevant. These are the dimensions of the station plan. And now comes the big thing. How do I do the curve? Now there are quite a few methods out there. Uh, one for example would be just to imagine it and draw it by hand like this and you know just try and maybe leave a pencil mark eventually. And I found that I'm totally useless with this method. So I found something else. All you need is a little money. And when I say little, I literally mean little money because all you need is a few small coins. And you can place these coins on the lines that you have drawn. And that way you can make up your curve. And then you can look at it and can say, well, I don't really like where this is sitting. Maybe it's a little bit more like that. Now this is fairly gentle. Yeah, I might like that curve. Or maybe not that much. Okay, you need to be a little bit more out there. You too. You maybe too. Right. Yes, that looks like a very pleasing line to me. Now all I need to do is lift one coin after the other and just mark the center of the coin. So I take this away. Here I am. Take this away. Well, this is just hitting the line, of course. And now I'm ready to draw the curve. In comes the bottle again. And this time I need a rather flexible baton because the radii in this curve are rather small. So and the first thing is I'm, I just try out uh, how to position the baton. You want to hit as many of the markings that you have done as possible. Yeah, that, that looks good. You can't draw the whole thing in one go because the curve is basically going right at around here it says it goes straight and then it bends towards left and this means I have to make small portions of it one after the other. Get a third hand here. Kind of have to find the spot where the curve bends the furthest and of course you can still make adjustments. I mean basically what you want is you want to have a fair curve. So don't you worry if you can't hit all the spots. It doesn't really matter. What really matters is that you have a fair line. And only if you like the line, then you will just draw it. So for example, this spot right here is not really sitting where it should. And as you can see, it takes a little while before you get there. I also have to make sure that this portion here is getting nice. So let's Let's have a look at it first. Okay, I think I have a hit here from the top. So I won't miss this opportunity to just draw this line right now. And here I am. Ah, and I have a little smudge here, but not to worry. As I told you, with a little help of this blister package, I can go right up to the edge and everything's fine now. Now only this small section here is needed. Of course you have to make sure that the transition from one curve to the other is smooth. This is far more important than one single point really. So if it now turns out that your curve comes out a little bit different, don't you worry a thing. That should almost do the trick. Now one bottle sometimes is not enough to hold the pressure, so let's get a little help here. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. 
And there it is. There is my main station. Now as you can see some of the markings are not right on the spot. For example this one is a little off. This one is a little bit off, not too much. This one is a little off. But it doesn't matter because what I now have is a really smooth station line. And I like this line a lot. That's quite nice. We'll see how it performs later. But for the moment that's all I need. One line is missing and that is the transom here on the other side. How is the transom shaped? Can I do whatever I want? Not exactly because remember we are building a wooden boat and that means I will bend wood planks, wooden planks around this main station and towards the transom they are just bent a little bit inwards. So basically this curve here should also be seen at the transom but of course a little smaller because I want the boat at the end to be a little slimmer than at the main station. I have to make up my mind now how slim exactly. Let's say this around here is the greatest width so the biggest half width. What I'm going to do now is I try to retrace this line a little further inwards and make it parallel. And I could go on, but of course there's one trouble. I'm hitting the waterline and the transom can't just follow the other curve. And the reason for that is that you need the underwater portion of the boat to be slim at the end. And the reason for that is that you want to mount a rudder and the water through which you are steering needs to hit the rudder. I was thinking to build the boat wider even below the water line and then at some point it hit me and said no I can't do that because then the water doesn't reach the rudder it doesn't stream around the rudder and that is actually what I need so at some point this curve needs to take its own way and the other thing that I have to take into account is that this curve is actually sitting a little higher because the transom is basically this line here seen from the side so this thing will be on the profile would, would be sitting here. I need this line probably to end uh, in this area. Something like that. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Now all I have to do is I have to transfer this curve to the other side because this is actually the view from the front and this is the view from the aft section. Now how am I going to do this? Uh, there's one instrument I haven't mentioned so far and it's very helpful now. You don't have to use it but it's really handy and that is a compass and this is a very special compass because it has this wheel here in the middle and with this wheel I can adjust the two legs and also when adjusted the legs will keep their positions. It doesn't wiggle around and that of course is very handy. So I can now just uh, go to my center line, adjust the position of the legs until I hit here, very good. And now I go to the other portion. Wait, I need to lift it also. Okay, so I need to lift this. How much? I need this point to show up here. So, taking the T-ruler. And this will be the top line of the transom. And now I can start. And there is the half breadth or the half width of the transom. And now I can mark this out a little bit more pronounced. That's the top of the transom. Very good. And while I'm at it, this is the top of the main station. I will lift the measurements which I find here with these lines and I will transfer them to the other side. Always keeping in mind that I need to shift the measurement a little higher up.
and there we are now what's missing is the second line that will cross the first one so that I can actually get a good position so an X that marks the spot all right I raised the question earlier how many horizontal lines do I really need and the answer is I need enough lines so that I have enough points with which I can reconstruct the line and this is what I'm trying to do right now I try to get this line transferred over here and I take a pen And sometimes when you play around with the baton, you find that the line that you just created with it looks even nicer than the one that you have dreamed up before. So, well, just go with the flow then. Right. Oh, this looks really handsome. Okay, on to the second part, which ends up here. I can now remove this line here. Very good. Now I have both the profile view here with the shear line, the stem, the keel and the stern post and transom. And I have my main station and I have my transom. And for the moment that is all I need. Instead of continue to draw lines I want actually to go and to make this three-dimensional. In other words, I want to build a model based on these drawings right here. And that of course will be the content of the next episode. So I hope you like what you have seen so far. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and make sure that you hit subscribe and the little bell button so that you are always up to date. Thanks for watching.